Good evening, YouTubers. Welcome back in to another edition of Astros Recap. Sunday night, 10.25 p.m., so a little earlier than usual. We've got some things I need to get done after this podcast. But David Artis here once again, here to break things down for you. Astros full seven game a week, so uh, they have an off day tomorrow, so they played like 13 straight games without a day off, something like that. Um, but good week, five and two. So obviously when they play seven games, if you can go five and two, which is basically winning your series, uh, depending on what you sort of do here, I guess. But um, yeah, so they took three of four against Seattle, Monday through Thursday. And then over the weekend in St. Petersburg, they took two of three uh, versus Tampa Bay. So I can't really complain. Um, this is the third straight series for the Astros where they actually had a chance to sweep. So they played four games against the Angels. Obviously, I talked about that last Sunday. Um, by the way, it is uh, now officially May 2nd. So, yeah, May 2nd. Uh, but anyway, so another week in the books, obviously. But, uh, yeah, like I was mentioning, the Astros had a chance to at least sweep one of these series. Uh, I talk about, you know, obviously winning the series is important, and that's your first and your first goal when going into any series. But when the opportunity presents itself to come away with a sweep, I feel like it's important to do that. Uh, but the Astros win the first three against L.A., lose the fourth, win the first three against Seattle, lose the fourth, win the first two against Tampa Bay, lose the third. So, um a little disappointing, I guess, but overall have to be sort of satisfied with uh, what they've been able to do. So, uh, with the Astros, obviously, uh, got the phone over here, obviously, to get back into some games here. Um, like I said, seven seven games this week, so uh, four with Seattle, things um, going good, obviously. Uh, game one, I think they won this pretty easily, if I can find it here. Well, 5-2, to two. so they scored some early runs. They got two in the first. They got two in the fourth, one in the fifth. Um, but Urquidy was better. He's a guy that you know had a sort of a struggling ERA over five going into this game, but he, he did a pretty good job as he got through six innings, five hits, two earned runs, didn't walk anybody, but struck out two, gave up two solo home runs. Um... But that was that. Um, obviously, you know, uh, Alvarez hit an RBI single. Guriel had an RBI single. Altuve had a two-run single. And Kyle Tucker hit a sack fly, which accounted for all five runs the Astros scored in that game. Um, but, yeah, Urquidy and our starters are doing a better job, especially of late, actually getting, into, getting through six, seven innings, which takes a lot of pressure off the bullpen. Obviously, the Astros, when they struggled, you know, a few weeks ago, uh, our starters weren't really going deep. You were getting five innings, and then your, you know, relievers in that bullpen is still a mess. Um, uh, you know, and you weren't scoring either. So your, your, your starters weren't going deep into games, which put more pressure on the bullpen to get more outs than you'd usually expect. And then you'd have your offense, who couldn't really score, uh, the whole thing was just not a good system. Uh, wasn't a recipe for winning. So, uh, offense kicked it back into gear. They're scoring just fine now. Uh, healthy, everybody's back. So, uh, Jordan, you know, is part of the five guys that went on the IL earlier this year. Uh, it was him. It was Jose Altuve. It was Alex Bregman. It was Martin Maldonado and Robel Garcia. Uh, you got four of those five back, with the exception being Jose Altuve. Uh, he had COVID, so he was the one, I guess, and that was in close contact with the other four. But they finally got Altuve back. And then Jordan goes back on the IL with the same safety protocol type thing. Although he was only gone for maybe three, four days. So Jordan, a guy who had COVID last year, not saying he can't get it again, but it's highly unlikely. But um, he's back. So your offense basically right now, I feel like, is fully intact with the way you'd like it, obviously. Um, have injuries in the bullpen to Paredes, Enoli Paredes, and 
uh, Blake Taylor, and still I won't have an update on them. Um, I mean, I haven't heard anything, so. And then, um, okay, of course, J Jake Odorizzi, who we hope to have back here at some point this week. So his, I think, injury was minor, thankfully. But, you know, getting Javier back in the rotation was good. Uh, we'll have Odorizzi there. When Odorizzi comes back, they'll shift Luis Garcia back to the bullpen or back to the minor leagues would be my guess as the minor league season starts this week, I believe. Like the Sugarland Skeeters, the new tri uh, AAA affiliate, will be starting their season, I believe, on Thursday. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, so getting the win there on Tuesday was nice, or on Monday. I actually missed Tuesday's game. I was in Brenham Broadcasting, but they did win this game 2-0. Uh, Christian Javier was incredibly good. And then our bullpen came in, <laughs> and they uh, they kept it. It was a shutout. So, um, go back to the calendar here. Um, let's see here. But, yeah, we scored two runs on the sack fly and, like, an RBI single, I believe. I didn't miss a whole lot in terms of scoring. Obviously, Javier pitched very well, as my phone, for some reason, struggles to load every time I do this podcast. And I try to click on this stupid thing. God, this, this thing really, really irritates me to no end. I'm trying to get lines and box scores, and I can't do it when it doesn't want to pop up. <laughs> All right. Anyway, they, they win that game 2 nothing. Javier Brooks Riley came in, had a very quick 1-2-3 inning. I know Presley got the save. Presley was like only his second save of the year. Like He's pitched in either tie games or just really hasn't had the chance. Early in the season, we were blowing teams out. Um, like the A's, we did the first four games. Presley hasn't really had a lot of save opportunities. Had a, a few more this week, so he's been good overall. ERA's under one. I was a little irritated with him after that game in Seattle where it was tied and he came in. And the first batter, he allowed a, you know, uh, a walk-off double to. So that was frustrating to see, but... Uh, Presley, I mean, he's a guy you're going to ride or die with, along with Ryan Stanick. So, Kent Emanuel, who was going to, I think most people thought he'd stay in the rotation after working at the bullpen, but going eight and two-thirds after the oh, oh, Odorizzi injury, uh, I thought he should stay in the bullpen. I just thought he was more valuable there. So, and he is going to stay in the bullpen, and I think that that's understandable. Uh I'm not concerned with our starters as much as I'm concerned with our bullpen. And Emmanuel's been good, so I'd keep him right there and, you know, use him as you can. Finally got this to load here, so. But Javier went seven innings, two hits, no runs, struck out six, walked three, moved his ERA all the way down to .87. <laughs> it makes you wonder even more why he, why he was sent down. Um when Oda Rizzi was brought up, so. But, yeah, they sent him down after two two starts, two, three starts, which was sort of a head-scratcher. But Rayleigh had a 1-2-3 inning, struck out two, and then Presley got the save, struck out a batter. So uh, that was actually Presley's third save. So Bullpen did a good job there getting the two innings, but Javier really set the tone. And the only two runs, like I said, so Jordan hit a sack fly, and then Kyle Tucker had an infield single. Yeah. And I didn't see any of this game, but it was nice to pick up the win, the shutout there. And then Wednesday, we actually came from behind. The Astros were down 5-3 to three going into the uh, eighth, and they had a four-run eighth where they rallied to win the game there. Um, Granke, uh, we talk about Granke as one bad start going into this one, of course, was that one against Detroit where he gave up. You know, four or five runs and four and two-thirds. He only goes four innings here. Four earned runs, struck out five, walked two. Uh, bring the ERA up all the, way, all the way to 3.44. So not great. Stanek, 
or excuse me, Brandon Belak got three innings, so he ate up some of the innings there, gave up an earned run, struck out two. Belak's going to be just sort of that long reliever. In fact, when Oda Rizzi enters the rotation, you'll have Belak and, well, we'll see. Uh, do they want to stick with Belak or go with Luis Garcia to get you your, as your sort of long reliever? Or they keep them both and you could send somebody else down. Not exactly sure, but Belak gets through three, giving up an, an earned run. Joe Smith, who actually gets the win here, he goes an inning, gave up a hit, but struck out two, didn't allow any runs. And Ryan Stanek actually gets the save in this game because Presley had pitched like four of the last five days. so And Stanek did just fine. Yeah, Stanek's been one of the more reliable relievers. So, um, yeah, but we the, the four run eighth for us was the big one as we were down. Uh, but had some big hits, some big clutch hits. Uh, I guess we were actually down five five two at one point, but Correa had an RBI single. Uh, there was a there was an error. At Correa, you know, it scored a run. So these, a lot of these runs were unearned. But Diaz had a big uh, RBI single to tie it. Castro, they walked in a run with a Castro walk. And then Altuve had a sack fly. So we were we were helped uh, by an error in that inning. But it was still good to see good at-bats and, and to come back and, and win that game the way they did. So uh, winning the first three in that series, obviously. And then a the Thursday afternoon game, they really got shut out, had one hit the entire game. Um, so they really, they lost that one to nothing, I believe. Yeah, one nothing. And we had one hit, so that was a bad. Yeah, in fact, we were no hit into the seventh inning. I think Correa was the only one to get a hit, but that was, yeah, that was it. So Garcia got the loss, even though he pitched well in this game. Uh, I mean, Luis Garcia, he's got 0-3 record, but his ERA is at 2.70, so he's had some bad luck when it comes to his win-loss total. Um, but only going five innings, uh, Abreu went two scoreless innings. Brooks Raley got in a scoreless inning. And Joe Smith, so, you know, we talk about the list. Brooks Raley, Joe Smith, pitched a little better. Uh, Joe Smith's more of a guy I feel like you feel like would, would come out of the little funk he was in because he's proven in the past. Uh, Brooks Raley in no way, shape, or form has proven he can do anything. Uh, so there's that. Um, and then Abreu, I'm not going to let him trick me. He's had a few good outings. Both Raley and Abreu gave up runs today, which I'll talk about here in a few minutes. Uh, they were both unearned. Uh, but, yeah, we'll get to that in a minute here. Uh, but losing on Thursday and then, of course, hitting the road for Friday. Do a good job. Win this game in Tampa Bay 9-2. Historically, the Astros don't play well in Tampa Bay. It just, I, I don't know what it is. They just it's, it's one of those cities, one of those places where they just, for some reason, can't beat Tampa Bay. Uh, Would have been nice to get the sweep, of course. But, um, yeah, going into Friday... Scoring nine runs, of course, um, but they scored, yeah, let's see, one in the first, three in the third, one in the fourth, one in the seventh, three more in the ninth, and yeah, uh, let's see here, McCullers, <laughs> uh, surprising, to say the least, first of all, pitching well on the road, secondly, going seven innings, which is not like him, striking out nine, walking three, getting the win so he goes to two and one era at 3.38 so he's our third starter in the rotation that's about where i guess he belongs kent emmanuel gets a scoreless inning and strikes at two uh and then andre scrub finally makes his first appearance so he was out i guess with some injury but a guy i didn't even realize uh, obviously he was with us last year he pitched pretty well i feel like for the most part had a good era struggled with putting runners on base he walked a lot of hitters, but he wasn't bad last year. He's never going to be a guy that's a setup or a closer type guy, but, um, you know, he gave up 200 runs, so ERA at 18 in just his first outing of the year, and we were leading 9 to nothing at the point, so that didn't really hurt too much. Um, 
but that was a good win. And then on Saturday, they scored three runs in the first inning. And then I, I think they didn't have a hit, or they got one hit the rest of the way. But um, good pitching from Urquidy on his birthday. Um, so Urquidy had a good outing. He had a few rough outings there, but the one against Seattle on Monday, and then this one was very good. Uh, I'm trying to pull up the box score if I can here. Before I actually get into Saturday's game, so that first game against Tampa Bay closed out the month. So the Astros, obviously, a month in the books, started April 1st. So you get through a month of baseball there, and they're 14-12. and 12, So if you do the math, they're on pace to win 87 games. <laughs> uh, been the tale of few, like two. I mean, you had a good stretch to start, 6-1. and one, Then you lose 9-10. and 10. And then you win like 9 of 11. So the Astros were good, terrible, and then good again. So it's sort of been a weird back and forth type month. But, you know, I mean, you look you look up and like I mentioned, month of April, just stay at, at or above you know, 500, just be around that mark. And then, you know, try to pull yourself together, get healthy, and then try to win some games. So... Obviously, with a month in the books, to, to be two games over 500, I think I, I'll take that definitely. And then they win uh, on Saturday, like I mentioned, three to one. So did all their damage in the first inning. Presley gave up a run, uh, but does get his fourth save. And Urquidy goes seven innings. So as I said, our starters are going a little deeper. Four hits, no runs. Struck out five, walked one, brings his ERA under four at 3.71, improves his record to two and two. Rayleigh again, scoreless eighth inning with two strikeouts. So Rayleigh's ERA was like at 15, all the way down to 6.75. Presley giving up the run, walking a batter. Uh, ERA goes up to 1.50, but he did get the save, so no harm, no foul there. And then today, they had their chance. I mean, they're up 3 nothing. They're up 4-3, but could not shut the door completely. As Javier, a guy you have to have faith in, uh, had a scoreless inning stretch on the line. He gave up a three-run home run, I believe, in the fifth inning. So he had 21 uh, consecutive innings without allowing a run, which was snapped today. Um yeah, so, I mean, they scored three three runs early on. Jordan Alvarez finally hit a home run. Feels like forever, but he did. And then we had a Jose Altuve sacrifice fly to score a run, and Michael Brantley hit a single to score a run, and then Meadows hit the three-run home run there to tie it. And we score another run on a Miles Straw RBI single. Miles Straw actually had a good game today. But Abreu gives up. Let's see here if I'm correct. So, yeah, both Abreu and Rayleigh gave up runs. They were both unearned. One was on an error by Yuli Gurriel. It was a 4-3 game. They had runners on first and third, I want to say. They brought the infield in. Ground ball to Gurriel, who threw high to Maldonado. I don't know whether they gave the error to Maldonado or Gurriel, but... Uh, Maldonado, yeah, he got the error, although the throw wasn't great. It was a high throw. It was going to be a close play at the plate either way, uh, but Maldonado wasn't able to catch the ball that was thrown sort of high. Um, uh, that allowed a run to score. A blown save for Abreu, his second, and then, um, yeah, Bregman had a throwing error as well, so... So look here, Brayu's ERA is at 4.30. Javier went five. Um, trying to look, but I mean Javier, he threw 81 pitches. I would have kept him out there, but yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, both of them gave up unearned runs. Abreu and 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 Brooks Raley, the two pitchers. Who've looked, I guess, better, but not. I'm not in a position where I'm gonna, you know, start trusting them quite yet. I'm not there, and I feel like Brooks Raley, especially, is gonna be that guy that will go out there and, and he'll have a few scoreless outings, and you'll feel like, all right, we might have something there, and then he'll go out his third or fourth outing, and then he'll give up runs, and then he's back to what you thought he was. So, 
Uh, Kent Emanuel is the lefty I have the utmost faith in right now in that bullpen. And until proven otherwise, of course, Blake Taylor in the IL, he was terrible in his outings, every single one basically, until he got hurt. So there's no faith there. Although I have no idea when he's coming back and his injury looked pretty severe. So we'll wait and see on that. Um, like I said, no update on those injuries in the bullpen there. Um, but Stanek actually got two-thirds of an out. He allowed the inherited runner that Brooks Raley had on base to score. Uh, but he struck out two and ERA at 2.08. So good there. And the Emanuel comes in to pitch the bottom half of the eighth. And no hits, no runs. Struck out two. ERA at 1.69. So he might be a key cog in that bullpen. Um, yeah. And we need people, you know, Stanek, Emmanuel. Um, but, yeah, you're still looking for maybe a third guy. And Brooks Raley and Brian Abreu aren't it uh, right now. Kyle Tucker's still struggling. God, he aggravates me to no end. Oh, God. He actually had a hit, two hits today. Um, you know. But I feel like a lot of his runs or his good plates or, or his good at-bats or plate appearances really – are meaningless so I mean do something for me when it counts before I start giving you credit again but uh, yeah so we yeah we lost that game <laughs> four, uh, five to four uh, but yeah I mean five and two I, I gotta like it obviously they, they picked up some games as Oakland struggled a little bit this week so um, we were a half a game back now we're a game and a half back I believe the Mariners are in second so Oakland at 17 and 12 leads the division. Seattle at 16 and 13. Houston at 15 and 13. LA 13 and 13. And then Texas at 13 and 16. So we're right in the middle there. Only a game and a half out. There's nobody really lighting up like the best team percentage wise in the ALs, the Kansas City Royals. That's a surprise. At 16 and 10, so it's not like the record's like off the charts. Nobody's really setting the league on fire. I mean, two-way tie in the uh, National League. Dodgers were playing well, but they've you know, they're three and seven in their last ten. And Milwaukee and San Francisco have the best record, tied at 17 and 11. So nobody really is like on fire. The Dodgers started out on fire, but they've cooled off. So that's that. But um. Ash just had the off day tomorrow. They're going to go to New York, uh, the Bronx, to play the Yankees for three. That will be an interesting <laughs> series. I bet those fans can't wait to, wait to boo. So that will be that will be a fun series, no doubt. And I've made my, um, uh, my opinions clear on how I feel about the booing. I actually enjoy it a little bit. So uh, that will be fun, obviously. Um, we'll go back. We'll have Granky uh, playing. Uh, on Tuesday, he'll start. Then we'll probably have, um, I guess it'll be Luis Garcia in game two, unless Oda Rizzi, he might miss his second start. So if that's the case, I'm going to guess. But he should, if he misses this start, he should definitely be back for, or they sneak him in the rotation somewhere, three, four, five. We'll, we'll wait and see on that. And then for uh, McCullers, we'll get the game on Thursday. And then I think we'll come back home after the six-game road trip. Let me double-check here. Yeah, they'll come back home and host Toronto for three. So that'll be a 10-game homestand after they finish up with New York, which will be nice. But, yeah, so... Yeah, I mean... Astros at 15 and 13, so... Would have been nice to get the uh, sweep. Look, look, Things look good when it was 3 nothing. But couldn't couldn't finish it off. But all in all, put things in perspective. Look at the bigger picture. Happy they've won three straight series after, you know, getting swept by Detroit, losing two in Colorado, uh, even before that, losing two or three in Seattle. So uh, it's nice to you know sort of turn things around a little bit. But um, trying to thank you know injury update. We got Jordan back. He was the main one. So nobody's really hurt other than the two bullpen pitchers who we've talked about in the past. Jordan's quick uh, or safety protocol 
IL stent was like three days, so I got scrubbed back in the bullpen. So we'll wait and see on if I get any news on you know Paredes and Taylor. I'll pass that along on my next podcast. I'm only at 25-ish, 26 minutes here, so not far, but you know. Astros not spectacular, but also not bad. They're right there in the mix. Again, I'm going to stick with the whole 88 to 92 win range and that being enough to win the division. I don't think the division's going to be uh, like, an, you know, it ain't going to take 100 wins like it did in past years. So, <laughs> yeah, so I was trying to think here as I stall for time. Anything else to add, really? Um,. You know, Kyle Tucker still struggling uh, for the most part. Miles Straw had a better day today. And then Maldonado. Yeah, Castro's actually been the better catcher uh, from a hitting standpoint, at least. Uh, Maldonado gets almost all the starts. You might see Castro once a week. But I've got Castro's had some big hits this year, and Maldonado, nothing. So, um,. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to think up and down. You know, Tuve struggled a little bit. He sort of broke out yesterday. Had a few hits. Michael Brantley has really cooled off, I feel like. Correa's still just there. I mean, he's okay, but he, I mean Correa ain't worth even close to a two hundred million dollar contract over six, seven, eight years. He's not even close. So Correa's a guy that I'm gonna be yeah, I've I've said this last week, two weeks ago. Uh, there's a light. There's a big target on Carlos Correa because uh, because of the contract status going in, and this is his last year as an Astro. I think I've come to that conclusion. <laughs> It'll be interesting. I don't know what the free agent class looks like. The Astros obviously will have some money to spend. Um, you know, with Correa, with uh, Granky and McCullers or Granky and Verlander, uh, which are big contracts off the books. They'll have some money to spend if they want to try to find a replacement there or look for another outfielder. So, yeah, Maldonado did get extended. That's something I didn't brought up. This was last week, I want to say. Is it last week or two weeks ago where he got extended for another year? So he'll be here next year. I think Castro was a two-year deal, so he'll be here all of this and next one as well. Um, but, yeah, we'll... We should have some money to spend uh, coming, you know. Obviously, the farm system's pretty pretty terrible. Uh, the you know the the minor leagues start up this week for the Astros, so we'll see sort of how the teams shake out and if there's any sort of rising stars. Uh, but I mean, we just don't know right now. But yeah, I heard that they were ranked 29th. Their farm system was ranked 29 out of 30 teams, so it's pretty bad. So. James Click will have some interesting decisions to make, but right now, just ride it out. Try to try to continue to win games. Get get you know, more good starting pitching. Uh, find ways to get outs in that bullpen any way you can, and continue. I mean, with the lineup, but you gotta love the lineup. One through seven or one through six, I guess, because Kyle Tucker's on that list, on my list of players I can't stand. Brooks Raley's still on that list. Don't get me wrong. If he pitches well this week and gets you know three, four more outings, and they're all solid, I, I'll, I'll consider taking him off. But uh, you know, Bray is still on that list. I'm gonna be tough. <laughs> Joe Smith, I think I will take off. Actually, I will take Joe Smith off the list, and I hope he doesn't make me regret that. But you know, so yeah, that's where I'm at, and Correa is still on the cusp of being on that list. We'll see. But, yeah, about 30, coming up close to 30 minutes here. So I'll wrap things up there. Talk to you next week. Sunday should be the 9th, I believe. Not even 11 o'clock yet. So early podcast. But, yeah, I got some things I need to get done here. So, anyway, I'll wrap things up there. We'll talk to you uh, next Sunday night.